When you have a massive goal, you must first make it something that not reaching it is unacceptable. Me not living my dream was unacceptable for me. When you get faced with a challenge like living in your car for three years, I had a dream that was so big, my dreams were bigger than all my problems. If your dreams aren't really big enough, then your problems will be bigger than your dreams. Remember this saying, inch by inch, anything's a cinch. So you got to set incremental goals along the way. Let's say you want to be a millionaire, but let's say you only make $5,000 a year right now then you have got to take whatever you did to make $5,000 and duplicate it so you can make 10. But when you make 10, that should be a minor celebration. Don't stay frustrated because you haven't reached the million. Because it takes a long time to make a million dollars. Leaders like Abraham Lincoln had the courage to change the course. We always honor people after they're dead. But in real time speed, our heroes were not popular because they swam upstream against the grain and they had to have courage to change the course. Nelson Mandela went to jail. You can get in trouble to change the course. Getting it right can have severe consequences. Corrections can often have severe consequences. So deciding as you look at your life, what fears that I'm allowing to imprison me that's keeping me from living up to my true potential, that's keeping me from breaking out, that's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life, what's, what's keeping me from controlling my destiny? The way to pass the test is not being frustrated by what hasn't happened. Not upset because your friend got married and you haven't met anyone. Not giving up because the property was sold out from under you two times. Just keep doing the right thing. Staying close to God. Connected to the vine. That's where your strength is coming from. That's where the favor, the blessing, the healing is. One thing I've always liked to do since I was a little boy is catch leaves falling from trees. We lived out on an acre lot in the suburbs and there were dozens of large oak trees on it. On a fall day, the wind would blow and I would see how many leaves I could catch. Years later, not long after I'd started pastoring, I came home from the church one afternoon. It had been a long day. We were dealing with some problems at the office, people coming against us. These opportunities we thought were going to work out didn't go through. I was tired, kind of frustrated. I was in the backyard. We had this one big tree. The wind started blowing. Leaves began to fall all around me, hundreds of them, if not thousands. It looked like it was raining leaves. I naturally started trying to catch them, grabbing here, grabbing there, but I couldn't catch anything. It was the strangest thing. Right when I was about to grab the leaf, it would dart away. I caught more when I was eight years old. I was already frustrated. This was like pouring salt on the wound. Nothing was working out. A couple of hours later, I went out for a run through the neighborhood. So I turned the corner, coming down the last half mile. The wind started blowing. Leaves were falling here and there. I didn't pay any attention. I just kept running. About a minute later, after everything had calmed down, as this arm came up, a leaf landed perfectly in my hand. I didn't try to catch it. I didn't even see it coming. It just fell right into my palm while it was in motion. It was like God said to me, Joel, you're striving, trying to make all these things happen. Make the ministry grow. Make doors open. Make people be for you. You don't have to do that. I control the universe. What I want open will open. What's supposed to be yours will fall into your hands. You don't have to manipulate things. Do it all in your own ability. God will direct the winds to find your hand. He'll cause opportunity to find you. He'll turn people that are against you to be for you. Now when I'm tempted to worry, wonder why something is taking so long, how's it going to work out, I open my desk drawer and I get this leaf out. It reminds me that what belongs to me will come to me. That the creator of the universe, the God who spoke worlds into existence, is ordering my step. That I don't have to strive, I just have to abide. Keep honoring God, just keep walking in His ways, and you will bear much fruit. The Compact Center is much fruit. Victoria is much fruit. Expensive fruit. Our serious radio channel, <laughs> our serious radio channel came to me much fruit.
I wonder if you're doing like I was, trying to grab a leaf, frustrated because something is not changing, wondering why it's not working out. Stop striving. At the right time, what belongs to you is going to drop into your hand. It's not going to happen by your own efforts, your own ability. Yes, use your gifts. Yes, be your best. But what God is about to do is supernatural. You couldn't make it happen in your own strength. You didn't have the power, the ability, the experience. But because you're abiding, not striving, you're going to bear much fruit. As a teenager, David was out in the shepherd's fields taking care of his father's sheep. God put a big dream in his heart. He knew he was destined to do great things, but he was stuck out there. Nobody paid any attention to him. He could have thought, I'm not staying here. I have more in me. I'm going to show people what I can do. But he didn't try to force the door open. He didn't get in a hurry and try to make something happen out of God's timing. He stayed faithful where he was. He took care of those sheep day in and day out, made sure they were protected, well fed, being his best when no one was watching. What was he doing? Abiding, staying connected to the vine. One day the prophet Samuel showed up at David's house. He told his father Jesse that he was there to anoint one of his sons as the next king of Israel. It wasn't any of the seven sons that were in the house. They had to send a messenger out to David to tell him to come in from the shepherd's field. The moment Samuel saw him, he said, that's the one. Notice, David didn't go after the crown. The crown came to him. He didn't manipulate things, live sour because he was stuck in the field, complain about how he got left out. He just kept abiding, being his best, working under God, not under people, and much fruit came knocking at his door. If you'll just keep abiding, doing the right thing when no one is watching, staying faithful when things aren't changing, like with David, favor is going to come looking for you. Good breaks, healing, the right people are going to come knocking at your door. You're not being left out. God hasn't forgotten about you. He sees your faithfulness. He sees you doing the right thing when it's hard. Your time is coming. Stay connected to the vine and much fruit is on the way. Something better than you've imagined. The reason it's taken longer than you thought is it's going to be bigger than you thought. Out of the ordinary. Something that you didn't see coming. I walked in our living room the other day and there was a lizard on the floor looking out the window. Now, I didn't want to touch him, but I didn't want him in the house. I got a paper grocery bag and I was going to catch him and put him outside. I put it on the floor just right, carefully scooted it up to him, but at the last minute he ran away. I tried this again and again. Every time he would outmaneuver me, run under the couch, I'd move that, get him in a corner, he'd run up the wall. This went on for 15 minutes. I chased him all over the room. Finally, he was so tired, so exhausted that he couldn't run anymore. I scooped him up, opened the door and let him out. The whole time he was running, I was trying to help him, but he wouldn't let me. He didn't see a way out. He didn't realize I could open a door. All he saw were dead end. From his point of view, there was nowhere to go, but I operate on a different level. I'm thousands of times bigger, stronger, more powerful. How many of us are like that lizard? We're trying to do everything in our own strength. Solve this problem, fix this person, accomplish this dream. The whole time God is saying, I want to help you, but you have to let me. As long as you're doing it only in your own strength, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to get worn down, exhausted. You have to depend on Him. Rely on Him and He'll make things happen that you can't make happen. God can see things that we can't see. We see dead ends. No way out. Can't break this addiction. The medical report's not good. It's not possible. We're natural, but God is supernatural. He can part red seas. He can heal sick bodies. He can cause contracts, opportunities, good breaks to come to you. This doesn't happen if you're striving, trying to do it all on your own. It happens if you're abiding, trusting Him, not worried, not striving, Dressed, but relaxed, knowing that He's in control. Every morning, it's good to admit our dependence on Him. God, I need you today. I'm going to stay connected to the vine. I'm going to be my best, use my talents, work hard. But God, I'm trusting you to bring the increase. I know apart from you, I can do nothing. You don't have to go through life all worked up, on edge. Today can be a turning point. 
come out from under that pressure. You can't fix everyone, change everything. That's not your job. God is saying to you what He said to the people thousands of years ago. Stop your striving. Be still and you will know that I am God. If you'll make this decision to abide and not strive, I believe and declare you're not only going to enjoy life more, but you're going to bear much fruit.